an interesting development. Uh, I think people who have been here for a while know of Johnny's Gym Show. Johnny's was famous or is famous for providing most of the talent, typically boy talent, boy bands and uh, boy groups um, for all of the TV programs and the entertainment industry. Basically, Johnny's Gym Show owned the field and um, it came out uh, after, what was it, 19... Um, let me see. Uh, 1987. Uh, no, I'm sorry. 2019. That um, the owner, the creator of Johnny's Gym Show, Johnny Kitagawa, uh, he died in uh, 2019, um, was a, a a pedophile that preyed on all of the boys that um, he was recruiting and training. So I, I don't know if all is is an over exaggeration of that, but there are a, a large number of victims who have complained since he died. He died at 87 years old. It, the leadership was passed to his sister and the whole uh, industry is shaking now. And um, so the, they're, they're going through a soul searching. They had an investigation that was paid for by Johnny's gym show to understand what was the extent of the damage that was caused by Johnny. Um, and also the, um, the, the number of victims and the, as they started this investigation, uh, it was supposed to be a private investigation. The reports were not going to be uh, released to the police or to the public. It was just for the Johnny Jim Show's uh, consumption and to revitalize perhaps their policies. That didn't sit well with the victims. They went public. There was a documentary th that was uh, created. I think it was produced and um, aired in the UK. And now it's become a big issue. And um, the Japanese government this will shock most of your sensibilities, really didn't do much about it. They kind of swept it under the rug as um, they almost never do. Um, and uh, so this really got people even more angry that uh, it was being ignored. You know, this is basically, um, you know, um, a sex crime that was perpetrated uh, by a Japanese company that was actually so powerfully uh, perceived by NHK, by uh, the television stations by Japanese government, that, that he re really had a, a free hand and was never criticized or attacked as a consequence of that. It was all going on um, behind the scenes. Um, and uh, the exposure that it was gotten, uh, that it did receive, was was quelled very quickly. So now with Johnny gone, the, um, the skeletons are coming out of the closet, so to speak. And the UN, um, it's interesting that the, uh, the United Nations um, uh, High Commission on Human Rights is sending a working group. They arrived on Friday, um, a working group on business and human rights to investigate Japan. Is this is this just uh, shocking? So the United Nations is sending a team to Japan. They'll be here until August 4th. They are having interviews and doing their own investigations in Tokyo. Uh, let me see. They're in Sendai, um, Osaka, Aichi Prefecture, Hokkaido, Fukushima. Um, and they're holding um, a news conference on the last day. So they'll have a news conference probably at the Foreign Correspondence Club. And then they'll, I guess, get the hell out of town uh, on that day. But it is a pretty high level uh, team that is here uh, doing this investigation. It's just a, and for those of us that have been following Johnny's Gym Show and this kind of sleeping scandal, this is something that's um, really um, uh, an eye opening thing to happen. So. You can expect to hear more and more um, news about this as this team kind of gets uh, the winds in their sails and continues to do their investigation. And then, um, you know, uh, August 4th, and that will be next week, so we can report on that um, in our, our next briefing.